Okay, so then let's talk about Silverlight, right? Well, Silverlight has actually been out for a little while. Okay, Silverlight 1.0 has been out for a while. We're talking about 2.0 in this discussion. But essentially what Silverlight is, and this is even more the case with 2.0, is it is a platform for developing plugins to web pages. Okay? Now, that might sound like, well, geez, we've been doing that for years using different toolkits. What makes Silverlight so unique? Well, a couple of things. When you're doing Silverlight 2.0, you are essentially programming against a new distribution of the CLR. Okay? You are programming with a new distribution of the .NET base class libraries, kind of like a micro version. Okay? And you can use managed code. So you would be writing your Silverlight plugin using VB or C Sharp. You would also be writing your Silverlight plugin using XAML. Okay? So it's kind of interesting. If you already feel comfortable doing WPF programming, you could pick up on Silverlight right now. You just fire it up and start writing code. Okay? Because Silverlight is like kind of borrowing a lot of these technologies that came from WPF, but now kind of modularizing them, micro-sizing them, and making them for plugins on web pages. So far, so good? Okay? So this again means, whoops, we're going to definitely be using XAML when we do Silverlight. Right? You have your choice of .NET languages when you're doing Silverlight, unlike 1.0, where we are kind of limited to scripting languages, ick, right? <laughs> now we have object-oriented languages. And even cooler, we actually have our own compact version of the base class libraries. Okay? So a full-blown object model. So you might kind of consider Silverlight to be a uh, competitor to something like Adobe Flash. Right? So the idea is, is you're building a normal everyday website with ASP.NET, but here, in this part of your web page, you want to have some extremely interactive content. Right? You want to be able to have animations, data bindings, you want to have graphics, you want to have the ability to do deep zoom in and zoom out. Okay? You want to have all this real functionality. Well, that can be completely authored now with a Silverlight plugin. The other cool part about Silverlight is, you know, much to the surprise of many people, truth of the matter is, the .NET platform is becoming more and more operating system neutral, right? And browser neutral. So when you're doing a Silverlight application, right, that's plugging into an ASP.NET web page, we actually have support for multiple browsers, pretty much all the big boys, okay? And, more interestingly, Mac OS X, right? So this is not something which is going to limit you to running you know, Vista IE 7, and that's it. Right? Works just great over on the Macintosh side of life. Also works great on multiple browsers. Well, that should already tell you something, right? Okay, if I've written something in Silverlight using C Sharp and this new distribution of the base class libraries, and it's running over here in a Macintosh, something has to be on that Macintosh machine to make it work. right? Because a Mac doesn't have this native install of the CLR. Well, that's true. Okay, very similar again to like Adobe Flash. Websites that need to use Silverlight have to install a Silverlight runtime. Okay? So there is a runtime which is for the Mac. And that would allow Mac browsers to go out there and use your web pages. Okay. Now, remember, Silverlight 2.0 and 1.0 for that matter. There's no native support in Visual Studio, right? So if you were to go back to work today and fire up 2008, you're not going to find any Silverlight project types. You're going to have to download some extra things, right? So if you haven't already done so, make sure that you're aware of the official Silverlight website. Pretty simple, silverlight.net. If you go there, you can download a whole ton of things, right? You could download the runtime. Now, the way that it kind of is working naturally is if you happen to go to a website that requires the Silverlight runtime and you don't have it, you'll be prompted right there to install it. Okay? But you can download it separately. You can also download the whole SDK, including the all-important documentation. Okay? That's free. You can download the project templates for Visual Studio 2008. That's also free. And I'll show you those templates in a little bit. And if you're still kind of wondering, well, what would I use Silverlight for, be aware that the website has this really cool area that shows hundreds of sample applications written in Silverlight. And if you just take the time to click around and see what you could do, it's actually wicked cool. 
Okay, I mean, there's some really cool stuff that you can build using your favorite .NET languages, right? You don't have to worry about, oh, geez, now I gotta use this different framework and this different API. You're just doing the same stuff you do any other day of the week, right? Okay, now, let's talk about this. As I already mentioned, there are two versions of Silverlight. There's the 1.0 stack, and then there's the 2.0 stack. As mentioned, 2.0 is actually in beta, okay? Now, there are, like I said, humongous differences between these two stacks. Okay, when we had 1.0, it was a good first step, right? They gave us some XAML, that's good. They gave us um, some limited controls, that's pretty good. But we were up to our eyeballs writing script code, okay? We didn't have a full-blown object model. We didn't have access to the base class libraries. Okay, it was just kind of a subset of functionality to build some pretty cool stuff, okay? But with the release of 2.0, which is pretty close, we're going to find that everything I said is going to be true. And I'll show you a couple of interesting uh, tables and diagrams that kind of show us exactly what we get. For example, if you use Silverlight 2.0, you can do link programming. Right? You can integrate into your Silverlight plugin WCF support. So you can do out of bandwidth calls to other locations. Right? So a lot of the cool new technologies are going to be baked right in there. And of course, you know, some of the other obvious benefits here is that it's going to be fully object-oriented. So everything you already know about classes, interfaces, structures, enums, and delegates applies directly. Okay? So here's kind of the high-level breakdown of what we're going to find. And it's, uh, well, it'll be explained as we go throughout this lecture. Remember that 2.0 has basically a mini CLR. So just like the normal CLR running on our computers, right, the plugin, that runtime plugin, is going to be hosted by a little CLR. So it's going to do the same kind of stuff. It's going to be handling memory management, right? It'll be loading up libraries in memory where it needs to. It'll be working with threading, right? And all that same kind of core stuff. Silverlight 2.0 also has a mini base class library. And I don't mean mini as in hardly anything is there. It's actually pretty complete, right? You have your own little version of MS Core Live, right? You have your own little version of system.core and the system.dll assemblies, right? You're going to be given some support for doing XML manipulation, including link to XML. You can use ADO.net. You can go ahead and do WCF. So they gave us a pretty healthy subset of what we could do for a traditional desktop program. And even better is we get a full category of controls now. You know, Silverlight 1.0 gave us a couple things, but now we got you know, pretty much the whole enchilada. Right? We got all the little pieces that we need to build up an interactive widget. So really, I think it's pretty safe to just consider Silverlight 2.0 just another distribution of the .NET platform. Right? But it's really targeted for interactive web plugins.